what's up you guys, this is Rob from A Gay Guy Plays, and today on The Rundown, our fingers have never been this sticky when we take a look at Avara. Now, I can honestly say that Avara has one of the most innovative kits that has been released to date. From a toggle that switches arrow effects, an ability that combines both stealth and bonus loot rolls, the first ranged toggle that embraces weapon mods, and of course, the return of aftertouch. Wrap this up in the first ever transparent cloth texture, and there is no denying that Avara showcases some of the best work DE has released this year. Now, Avara's blueprints, as well as the rest of her components, drop randomly in spy missions based on tier. But if sneaking around isn't your style, you can't always bust open your wallet and pick her up in the market, pre-built along with a catalyst and warframe slot for 325 plat. Now, statistically, Ivara is extremely squishy. While her shielding is standard, both her health and armor statistics are some of the lowest in-game. However, as compensation, she does have one of the highest power pulls and sprint speeds, meaning that you'll have to rely on trickery and parkour to keep yourself out of trouble. Her passive pairs wonderfully with this as Ivara comes with built-in enemy radar, giving her an edge when it comes to navigating the battlefield. Now, let's take a look at her stash. Ivara's first ability, Quiver, gives access to four different types of arrows, with each tip giving various options for play. A quick tap will cause the tips to rotate, and when you're ready to shoot, you can just hold it down and let it fully charge until it releases your payload. First up in her Quiver is the Cloak Arrow, which creates a 2.5 meter bubble of invisibility for 12 seconds, where both her and her allies can execute some very dirty deeds. The interesting thing about this one is that it can actually be aimed at allies and, through the use of Navigator, can even be used to target your own Sentinel to create a moving zone of invisibility. So while this may prove to be an awesome tool for you to put yourself in the right position during stealth missions, picture tagging an Ember using World on Fire, a Mesa in her Peacemaker, or just a really shitty player on your team that may need a bit of help. Next up, her dash wire arrow is probably one of the most entertaining, creating a group usable zipline from her feet to the arrow's point of impact. These wires stay active permanently, but do have a maximum of 4. If any more than that are cast, the oldest wire will be removed. This arrow is awesome for accessing harder reach places and can also be handy in defense and interception missions, setting up strategic perches that give you the perfect position to pick off your enemies. Also note that this works fantastically with Prowl as you do not suffer a movement penalty when walking on the wires. Noise Arrow is the third in her kit. It creates a sound that causes the AI to want to investigate the point of impact. This will usually also cause enemies to cluster, which can be used to your benefit. Whether you plan on wiping them out with a guided Tomcore grenade or simply luring them away to continue your stealth run, this makes for a fantastic tool to make the AI do exactly what you want. Just note that while this does attract the enemy, they do not go into an alerted state, allowing you to activate stealth finishers if you're sneaky enough. The last and personally my favorite tip in her quiver is the sleep arrow. This causes all enemies within 6 meters from the area of impact to fall asleep for 10 seconds, opening them up to melee finishers. Just keep in mind that they will wake up early when you deal more damage than approximately half of their health. So if you're planning to get up close and personal, make sure that reach around finishes them fast. Now her second ability, Navigator, pairs fantastically with Quiver. Once activated, this skill gives you control over a projectile you fired, allowing you to maneuver around corners or strike strategic body parts, with its damage increasing the longer it's kept in flight. If you currently have a projectile in air when activated, it will lock onto that, otherwise your next shot will be controlled straight out of the gate. Now, this isn't limited to her own abilities, but can actually be used on all forms of projectiles, from grenades to throwing knives, and yes, even the glaive. Now, there are a couple things to keep in mind. First off, Navigator's momentum can be accelerated by holding the fire button. However, for finer movements, try using the zoom key in order to slow down its trajectory. Next, Navigator can only control one projectile at a time, meaning that weapons using multi-shot will randomly have one of their projectiles selected for navigation. In addition, a weapon with punch through or that has punch through mods equipped will be able to strike one target then follow through to another target for a double penetration. Now clearly this is going to be amazing when combined with select arrows from the quiver, allowing her to set the stage for a tactical strike even before she's entered the room. Prowl is her third ability. Once toggled on, Avara is placed in stealth, slowing her movements and giving her the ability to shove her hands down her enemy's pants for a little sneaky grab at their loot tables. Threads of light will be cast upon a specific enemy and after a few short moments, her target unloads their goods without any resistance. As long as you keep quiet. Just note that this will only affect a single target at a time and will only allow you to pickpocket them once. In addition, while in Prowl, she is granted bonus damage to headshots as well as the stealth multiplier to her melee attacks. 
Now, there are a couple things to be aware of. First off, firing non-silent weapons will cause your stealth to break, revealing yourself temporarily. Attempting to sprint while on the prowl will also cancel the effect, however, rolling is just fine. And lastly, while prowl slowly drains energy over time, it will also drain more energy the further you move. So, plan your engagements accordingly. Ivara's fourth and final ability is the Artemis Bow. With a quick yank on her bowstring, she's able to launch several arrows in a vertical fan, which is perfect for multiple penetrations on a single enemy. However, if you're looking to thin down a crowd, charging up your shot will slowly rotate your reticule to a horizontal fan. And if you're looking to pull something fun out of your quiver, use your secondary fire for quick access to one of your special heads. Now, this works very similarly to other weapon-based toggle abilities, inheriting mods from both her frame and her primary weapon. The biggest feature of which is definitely multi-shot, as Avar's Artemis bow innately fires off 7 arrows at max rank. With the 90% multi-shot from Split Chamber, it actually maxes out at a fan of 14 per shot, which definitely makes up for the fact that the Artemis bow, even with the standard bow build, cannot red crit. And while it does critical quite frequently, it does not have a 100% crit chance when adopting the standard bow loadout. Now, the one big difference here is that as compared to its melee counterparts, this toggle will drain energy on a damage per shot basis, as opposed to energy per second. So you may want to act more tactically with this one, because unloading too quickly may leave you drained. So, all in all, while Ivara isn't necessarily an upfront powerhouse, especially with such fragile base stats, she is one of the most adaptable frames in-game. She will be highly rewarding to players that are creative and tactical, as many of her skills can be used synergistically for devastating effects. When playing in stealth, the noise and sleep arrows from her quiver combined with Navigator are a devastating combination. The use of Prowl and Dashwire give her a bird's eye advantage on stationary missions, allowing her to use Navigator as well as the slew of arrows in her quiver to either support her allies, control enemies, initiations or simply rain justice from above using her Artemis bow. Now as it stands, I think the only issue that I've got with Avara is how finicky her powers can be to control, namely the arrow selection on Quiver, which for the most part will require you to remember the rotation of arrows if you plan on accessing them quickly during intense battles, and the steering on Navigator, which honestly seems inconsistent, with some projectiles still moving at near light speed when decelerated, and others moving at a snail's pace at their default speed. Even her Artemis bow can feel quite odd, especially if you have another bow equipped as your primary. You'll need to mentally swap the way her standard bow works with the quick taps and charge rotations of the ultimate. Regardless, these are all skills acquired over time, and I'm personally having tons of fun with her. But then again, who wouldn't when you've got so many different heads shoved into your quiver? So thank you all for watching another episode of The Rundown. If you haven't already caught it, be sure to check out my fanboying over update 18, which should give you a nice spoiler-free overview of all but one of the weapons available in the update. Or if you're into something a little bit different, catch up with me on episode 1 of the Holiday Advent. Now, don't forget to do all the things that I ask you do at the end of every one of these, and as always, stay tuned to watch me play with more of my favorite tips here at A Gay Guy Plays. Seriously though, hold on to your fucking buttholes, the dream is alive! Oh my god, and it is so good! It is so beautiful! Oh, best frame 2015!